Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens of Once Upon a Game, and today I'm going to take a look at uh, uh, the Battles for Ypres uh, from Compass Games. It's part of uh, John Gorkowski's Red Puppies campaigns, and this is it was Volume One. Uh, covers the uh, covers battles in October 1914, May of 1915, and September of 1917. Uh, had not really had too much World War One uh, titles, so I decided to grab this while it was still on pre-order. Um, it just came in today, and I'm going to uh, crack the shrink, take a look at what's inside. All right, so the shrink is off. You missed the lovely sound of the plastic coming off. But uh, uh, one thing that's cool about this is even though it's three maps, it's uh, one map per uh, scenario, as I understand it. Um, and the solitaire uh, suitability is quite high. I believe an 8 out of 10, so it's, it's very helpful. Uh, just there don't seem to be a lot of World War One out there. There's some point-to-point uh, -point and area control games, but uh, started playing the Great War and uh, thought I needed to have something good on here. Compass makes some good quality games. Uh, so anyway, let's just see what's in the box. All right, we have one die, one little tiny blue die. Let's we'll fix that. The catalog, beautiful box art too. Obviously, it's a picture, but. Uh, Nice. The rule book. It's not very, not very glossy, but very serviceable. An always appreciated counter uh, map. And I'll show you everything that's that should come with it. Sounds good. Um, it's for color. Notes. I had read, uh, went ahead and read most of the rule book online uh, before I ordered it. One thing I thought was really cool is that this one comes with a, uh, in the um, U.S. Civil War, it has the method where uh, you roll initiative and the difference between the Union and the South's initiative dictates the uh, number of actions that are allowed. Uh, and this has that same kind of functionality in it, which I thought was really cool. Um, so anyway, it's a good book. Let's see it. Uh, Clocks in here. Thirty-two pages. Thirty-six pages, including the counter reference. Uh, and this does include the campaigns. And from what I read of the PDF, it seems like a very Simple system to learn, but very uh, it models combat pretty well. Oh, we got another die. Black die. Really black and blue die. Now. Play card. Train effects. One card here. Sequence of play. Tracker, casualty list, inside it, that's always good. I hate when they put reference on the back, I'm like, oh, I gotta take all my tokens off and then deal with those. Second turn effect chart, second player. Counters, counters. For this, there's a pretty good counter sheet, alignment. It's pretty good. A little clip in there up at the corner, but not any valuable data. So it to be clipped. The reverse seems fine as well. Yeah, it's just clipping the top of that hex number. It's not actually taking any of the data off of it. So it's one sheet. And there's three sheets here. Two. Those are those are trench works, I believe. That's interesting. They all run together, but then they pop apart separately. I have to see how that works. Uh, this kind of sheet's pretty good. It's obviously shifted the other way. There's obviously a miss alignment on the punch or on the yeah on the die, but. I'll have to see if that matters. 
This may not have hidden information. If it does, those are marked and probably need to be replaced, but otherwise, I'm sure they're okay. Okay, there's the word smoke. It's obviously cut off. Again, probably not going to matter. It's not a good quality job there on the second counter sheet. Let's see. Let's see this. Counter sheet. Two. I don't think this is. It is counter sheet two. And finally, counter sheet three. Uh, this one looks a little better aligned. Seems almost, almost well centered. Hmm. Let's see how that affects the back of this one. Yeah, looks like some stuff's cut off here. I don't know, looks like counter sheet two may have to be replaced. Take a look and see if it matters. All right, after that, we have three maps. So, uh, unfold one of those, we'll take a look at it. Okay, so the map's unfolded now. And it's, it's pretty big, it's 22 by 34. So obviously that's eight and a half by eleven, eight panels, which always sounds smaller than it is when you unfold it. This is the 1914 map. That's some terrain. That's. It's definitely on the on the line between beautiful and functional. Seems very informative. I love the I love the font choice. Seems to tie in with the period, and that's that's very nice. I know some of these scenarios are shorter and only use smaller sections of the board. So we're gonna fly over. Yeah. So it's the 1914 map. Polygon valve. <laughs> what an interesting name. So anyway. Uh, that is the map quality. Same thickness, about as any action I've done. So decent quality. Uh, definitely a lot smaller. Well, probably the same size hexes, I guess. Anyway, so that's, we get three of those, one for each scenario. Um, all right, so that, put the map back away. That is what you are getting in the box for Epris. Red Puppies, Battles for Ephraim, Volume 1. Uh, looks like the game again, I think. This one might have to be replaced. Counter Sheet 2. It's interesting. Counter Sheet 1 seems to be punched slightly high. This one seems to be punched slightly low. And the uh, third one seems pretty much on target. So it's kind of like artillery during World War 1. Uh, yeah, near the target. Something and this one seems totally acceptable. All right, so if you are interested in picking this one up, just released the compass. That is what you're going to get. Now time to tackle the rules and the rolls. Ooh, five. Anyway, uh, so check it out. Thanks for watching.